بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله we'll continue with lesson number 8 from سورة الأنعام آيات number 60 to 65 very important آيات just to recap Last time we were discussing the vast knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how only He who knows the knowledge of the unseen, not even prophets know of the unseen, not even any of Allah's messengers claim that they knew the unseen, of course, except those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shared with them. Similarly, the awliya of Allah, the saint, the pious, the pious believers, they never claim that they know the knowledge of the unseen. He alone knows when the hour will come. No one knows. Inna Allah indahu ilmu sa'ati wa yunazilu al-ghaytha wa ya'lamu ma fil arham. Verily, Allah knows when the hour or the knowledge of the hour, when it, it is going to take place. And he sends down the rain. Wa ya'lamu ma fil arham. And he knows what is in the wombs. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدًا And no person knows what he will earn tomorrow. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٍ And no person knows in what land he will die. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ Indeed, Allah, verily Allah is all-knower, all-aware. So... This is basically what we were talking about, uh, the vast knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, وَيَعْلَمُ So with this, in addition to that, what we discussed last time, وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And he knows whatever is on the land and in the sea. And uh, not even a grain or an atom escapes his knowledge, whether it is buried in the ground or it is in the deep seas, Allah knows everything. وَمَا تَسْكُتُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا And not a leaf falls off a tree except that it is within the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ Not even a grain in the darkness in the depths of the earth. وَلَا رَطَبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ And no wet or dry except in a clear record, in a clear book. And this Kitab al-Mubin, by the way, is the attribute of uh, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is out of knowledge in other words. And now we continue here. Wahuwa, this is the ayah I recited. Wahuwa الذي يتوفاكم بالليل ويعلم ما جرحتم بالنهار. So to continue to learn about the vast knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are informed that it is He who takes the possession of your soul. At night, when we go to sleep, we are in a state of minor death. And that is wafat. That is called wafat. And he knows what you have done during the day. As a matter of fact, in Surah Al-Zumar, the, the idea of... Uh, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ is explained even further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings death to his servants in their sleep at night. اللَّهُ يَتَوَفَّ الْأَنفُسَ حِينَ مَوْتِهَا وَالَّتِي لَمْ تَمُتْ فِي مَنَامِهَا It is Allah who takes away the souls at the time of their death and those that die not during their sleep. So what happens? فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتَ وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ He keeps those souls for which he has ordained death, the death, the earthly death. Allah had decreed that so-and-so would die in his sleep. So the souls have already risen. Allah has possession of all the souls and the spirits and he will withhold those spirits and souls that were decreed for them to die in their sleep. And what happens to the rest? And sends the rest for a term appointed. All the souls come back down and revive 
the individuals upon waking, waking up. Thus mentioning both here, the minor death and also the major death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا جَرَحْتُمْ بِالنَّهَارِ It is he who takes your souls by night when you go to sleep and has the knowledge of all that you do during the day. This ayah actually demonstrates Allah's perfect knowledge of everything. The knowledge of his creation, he knows everything we do openly or secretly, by day or by night. He knows what we think, he knows what we are doing, he knows what we are about to do. And he also knows the things that we are unaware of, which later on, the thoughts and ideas come to us, even that it is within the realm of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Ra'd we have, for example, سَوَاءٌ مِنْكُمْ مَنْ أَسَرَّ الْقَوْلَ وَمَنْ جَهَرَ بِهِ وَمَنْ هُوَ مُسْتَخْفٍ بِاللَّيْلِ وَسَارِبٌ بِالنَّهَارِ It is the same to him, whether any of you conceal or hide his speech or declare it openly. So whether you have it in your mind or you say it openly, it is within the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether he be hid by night or go forth freely by the day, it is also within the knowledge of Allah. So don't think you can go and escape to some dark place where no one sees you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and knows what you're doing behind the curtains. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا جَرَحْتُمْ بِالنَّهَارِ It is he who takes your souls by night when you go to sleep and has knowledge of all that you do by day. Now here's something the Prophet ﷺ used to say because we go to sleep and we wake up in the morning. We have this hadith on Hudayfa where the Prophet ﷺ used to say when he would go to bed, he would put his hands underneath, he will rest his cheek over his hand and supplicate and say, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. O oh Allah, by your name, I amut, I go to sleep. Amut, the word maut is used here to mean the minor death. Wa ahya, and by your name, I will be revived again in the morning. And what happens when he wakes up in the morning? We have another dua. The Prophet used to say, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyani ba'dama amatani wa ilayhi nushur or Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. All praise and thanks are due to Allah who revived us after he caused us to die. This is the minor death. After we went to sleep, we were revived and we praise and thank to him and eventually and toward him we spread. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari. So sleep is the sister of death or the minor death if you will. Because when we sleep we lose self-consciousness totally. The souls are raised and we lose complete consciousness. ثُمَّ يَبْعَثُكُمْ فِيهِ Then he raises you, he wakes you up again. And this cycle, as you know, continues on a daily basis. We go to bed, our souls go up. We wake up in the morning, our souls come down. And you know, because of the nature of the soul, the soul moves instantaneously. There's no time element or time factor involved with the soul, with the spirit, because the spirit came by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is made out of light, as some scholars suggest, based on a hadith. And just like angels move so swiftly and so quickly, the human souls also travel that quickly. So when we sleep, when we become unconscious totally, it's at that moment when the souls travel to the seventh heaven. And when we wake up, it is instantaneously the soul comes back down and we regain consciousness. And this cycle continues. We sleep and we are raised again. He will send you back and he raises you back to a fixed term. To a fixed term. 
Now this known time is known only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah willed for you or for me to live for 50 years and so many days and so many seconds, we will live for exactly that amount of time. We cannot delay it, nor can we make it come sooner. So this cycle continues up until we expire or we are killed by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what is called the major death. So this cycle of returning your soul in the morning or and taking your soul up in the evening continues to a fixed term until one completes this cycle that is determined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ But then what happens? When your time is up, ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ Then you return back to him. ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And then he will inform you of what you were doing. He knows everything. Now, mind you, these articles of faith that we are studying have been repeated over and over in the Qur'an. And that was actually the main subject during the Meccan period. The Prophet ﷺ was not talking about halal and haram. Rather, he was talking about the Allah, the essence of Allah, the attributes of Allah. He talked about the akhirah, the day of uh, resurrection or the day of judgment. Uh, he talked about paradise, he talked about hell, and all of these subjects had been repeated. As a matter of fact, two-thirds of the Qur'an was around those subjects in Mecca. And those subjects were repeated and repeated, but in different modes of explanation, in different ways, using different words, using different terminologies. And this is what is meant by tasriful ayat. What is tasriful ayat? Meaning, the same subjects are discussed, but in different ways, using different terminologies, different modes of expression. And that's why Allah in the same surah later on in 105 explained, وَكَذَلِكَ نُصَرِّفُ الْآيَاتِ It's the same subject, but we present it in a different way. وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ And he is the irresistible, he is the Qahir over his servants. He is the one who is controlling his servants. Nobody can go beyond his authority. And he sends gardens over you. Now there are two types of gardens. First of all, those guardians are the angels. The first type are those who guard you, who guard your life. You don't need other guards because you cannot expire or be killed except with the express permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that cannot happen before the appointed time. So you have all these angels protecting you when the time is up, then they will take up your soul permanently. So angels protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in Surah Al-Ra'ad, for example, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِّن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ For each person, there are angels in succession before and behind him. Now, we're not aware of them because we don't see the angel. But this is a fact. This is what Allah is informing us. They guard him by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah sends those hafala, those guardians, to guard us. Well, again, we have, for example, وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ And we, over you, are your protectors, your guardians. We will protect you, but verily over you are appointed angels in charge of mankind to watch you. As a matter of fact, as we speak, as we speak, we are surrounded by angels to protect us. Because we have this hadith on Abi Hurairah, on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ Anytime a people are joined together in a house of the houses of Allah, يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ As we're doing right now. وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ And they're studying among themselves. إِلَّا 
nazalat alayhi musakina sakina tranquility peace descends upon them wa ghashiyatuhum arrahma the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers them wa haffathuhum almalaika and angels surround them angels surround them wa dhakarahum allah fi man 'inda and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those individuals by name to those who are with him the angels that are close to allah al malaikatul muqarrabun so that's the first type of angels who protect allah's servants the other type the second type is guardians or angels who keep your record of deeds what one is doing and what one is saying for example in surah qaf we have the ayah that explains إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدٍ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Remember that the two receivers, the recording angels, receive one sitting on the right and one on the left. This is why when we make salam in our salah, in case you wondered, we say As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. We are saying salam to the angels that Allah assigned for each individual. We have one on the right and one on the left. And both are writing down everything we do. Not a word does he utter, but there is a watcher by him ready. وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظَةً And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to you حَفَظَةً Guardians. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Until such time when death approaches each of you تَوَفَّتْهُ رُسُولُونَا وَهُمْ لَا يُفَرِّطُونَ Our messengers, the angels that were assigned to take the souls, the spirits of those individuals will come take it and they will never neglect their duty. They cannot delay it nor do it before hand because angels are created to administer the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are employed by Allah and they do precisely what they are commanded to do they cannot disobey they cannot disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do just exactly as they are commanded so that's what happened when the time of death comes those messengers those angels will take the souls and they will not neglect their duty and then they are returned to Allah their true protector true sustainer true master we have this hadith on Abi Huraira you find in uh, Musnad Ahmad rahimahullah wa radiyallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna al-mayyita tahduruhu al-malaikatu fa idha kana al-rajulu salih qalu the angels attend the dying person if he is a righteous person the angels will say ukhruji ayyatuha al-nafsu al-tayyibah كانت في الجسد الطيب أخرجي حميدة وأبشري بروح وريحان ورب غير غضبان O pure soul from a pure body come out with honor and receive the good news of rest of peace satisfaction and a Lord who is not angry فلا تزال يقال لها ذلك حتى تخرج and the angels will keep saying this until the soul leaves the body. ثم يعرج بها إلى السماء فيستفتح لها فيقال من هذا فيقال فلان. And they will then raise it up to heaven and will ask that the door be opened for the soul and it will be asked who is this? It will be said the soul of so and so. فيقال مرحبا بالنفس الطيبة كانت في الجسد الطيب ادخلي حميدة وأبشري بروح وريحان ورب غير غضبان 
it will be said, welcome to the pure soul that inhabited the pure body. Enter with honor and receive the good news of rest, satisfaction, and a Lord who is not angry. فَلَا تَزَالُ يُقَالُ لَهَا ذَلِكَ حَتَّى يُنْتَهَا بِهَا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الَّتِي فِيهَا اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلُ This statement will be repeated until the soul reaches the heaven above where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Now what happens to the wicked soul? This is for the righteous. وَإِذَا كَانَ الرَّجُلُ السَّوْءُ قَالُوا And if the dying person is evil, wicked, then the angels will say, أُخْرُجِي أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْخَبِيثَ كَانَتْ فِي الْجَسَدِ الْخَبِيثِ أُخْرُجِي ذَمِيمَةً وَأَبْشِرِي بِحَمِيمٍ وَاسَّاقٍ وَآخَرَ مِنْ شَكْلِهِ أَزْوَاجٍ Get out of your body, O oh, wicked soul, from a wicked body. Get out in disgrace and receive the news of boiling fluid, a fluid dark, murky, intensely cold, and other torments of similar kind, all together to match them. فَلَا تَزَالُوا يُقَالُوا لَهَا ذَلِكَ حَتَّى تَخْرُجْ And this statement will kept on repeating until the soul eventually comes out of the body. ثُمَّ يُعَرَجَ بِهَا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ And then the soul will be raised up to the heaven. فَيُسْتَفْتَحُ لَهَا فَيُقَالْ مَنْ هَذَا فَيُقَالُوا فُلَانٍ And a request will be made that the door be opened for it. And it will be asked, who is this? And it will be said, this is the soul of so and so. فَيُقَالُوا لَا مَرْحَبًا بِالنَّفْسِ الْخَبِيثَةِ كانت في الجسد الخبيث ارجعي ذميمة فإنه لا يفتح لك أبواب السماء It will be said not welcome to the wicked soul from the wicked body Return with disgrace for the doors of heaven will not be opened for you فترسلوا من السماء ثم تصيروا إلى القبر And so it will be thrown from heaven until it returns to the grave فَيُجْلَسُ الرَّجُلُ الصَّالِحُ فَيُقَالُوا لَهُ مِثْلَ مَا قِيلَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الْأَوَّلِ And so the righteous person sits and similar is said to him as before وَيُجْلَسُ الرَّجُلُ السَّوْءُ فَيُقَالُوا لَهُ مِثْلُ مَا قِيلَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الثَّانِي And the evil person sits and similar is said to him as before. So it is possible that the meaning of ثُمَّ رُدُّوا Ruddu ilallah also means that the return of all creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned to Allah on the day of resurrection for judgment, of course. For example, we have this ayah Say, O Prophet, verily, those of old. And those of later times, everyone, al-awwalun wal akharun all will surely be gathered together for an appointed meeting of a known day, the day of resurrection. We have another ayah, for example, from Surah Al-Kahf. وَحَشَرْنَاهُمْ فَلَمْ نُغَادِرْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا And we have gathered them, we have assembled them all together so as to leave not one of them behind. So, ثُمَّ رُدُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ could only mean that all creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَوْلَاهُمُ الْحَقَّ The return to Allah, the true protector, the true sustainer, the true master. أَلَا لَهُ الْحُقُّ Does not authority belong to him? Surely, his is the judgment and the final word. وَهُوَ أَسْرَعُ الْحَاسِبِينَ And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the swiftest in taking account. He's very quick, just like that. He does not require time to prepare your record. In no time he will take the account of all people. Now we go to, we'll shift gears now, from his perfect knowledge of everything to the omnipotent attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is most powerful 
capable of doing anything. Say, O Prophet, who rescues you from the depths of darkness in the land or in the sea? You pray to him humbly, sincerely, and also in secret, saying, If only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this, from the danger they are in, whether on land or in the sea, you will find us among the grateful ones, O Allah. So imagine you are riding a boat in the middle of the sea or ocean and then storm comes at you. Immediately you call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when one is in danger, the fitrah jumps ahead of the person calling on its creator, calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be crying out to Allah, Oh Allah, you save me, and this is normally what happened. You save me, and I promise you that I will mend my ways. I will obey you. I will pray. I will give in charity. I will do everything you want me to do. And this is, we have in uh, another ayah, Surah Yunus, actually, that explains this whole phenomenon. هو الذي يسيركم في البر والبحر حتى إذا كنتم في الفلك وجرينا بهم بريح طيبة وفرحوا بها جاءتها ريح عاصف وجاءهم الموج من كل مكان. He it is who enables you to move to travel through the land and the sea till when you are in the ships sailing. And they sail with them with a favorable wind. They rejoice when the wind is going in, their, in the direction they want it to go. They are happy. No effort is required. You save on fuel. Sea is calm. Gentle wind pushing the actual ship in the direction they are going. So they rejoice. Then comes a stormy wind. And the waves come to them from all sides. And they think that they are encircled within. Now they are in danger. All these waves, big, humongous waves, threatening the people on the ship. Now what do they do? Then they call unto Allah sincerely. In their dua, مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Deen here means dua. They are sincere in calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَإِنْ أَنْجَيْتَنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الشَّاكَرِينَ If you only save us from this danger, we will be indeed among those who will be grateful to you. Will be indeed thankful to you. In other words, they're making promises that they will mend their ways and they will do whatever is required of them to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الضُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ضَلَّ مَا تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ This is a similar situation actually in Surah Al-Isra. وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الضُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ضَلَّ مَا تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ Look how beautiful. When something harmful touches you, fil bahar, while you are in the sea, when some harm strikes you at sea, those that you used to call upon besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala vanish from you except Him. Those who were calling on Lat and Manat and Uzza, now they vanish. They don't think of those anymore. Pharaoh, for example, who claimed to be so powerful, when he was drowning, what happened to him? He all of a sudden realized it was to him before the knowledge has come to him. Musa came to him with the truth, not only truth, signs, evidences, miracles before his eyes. That was knowledge of this truth. 
But when it became real, when it became true, when he himself was drowning, it became haqqul yaqeen, certainty for him. This is real now. His power, his claim of being God and so powerful did not help him in the least. This is why you find in Surah Al-Baqarah, what happened to him? He drowned in the Red Sea actually. وَإِذَا فَرَقْنَا بِكُمُ الْبَحْرَ فَأَنْجَيْنَاكُمْ وَأَغْرَقْنَا آلَ فِرْعَونَ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ We drowned the people of Fir'aun and Fir'aun too. So it became حَقُّ yaqeen for him. Now he's facing death, threatened by this big tidal waves. By that time, he for a moment knew that what Musa was calling him to was indeed the truth. So he said, حَتَّى إِذَا أَدْرَكَهُ الْغَرَقُ الْغَرَقُ قَالَ آمَنْتُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا الَّذِي آمَنَتْ بِهِ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلُ وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ At that moment, at that moment, he said, after he was drowning, he could not escape drowning, he said, I believe, آمَنْتُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا I believe in the God in which there is no God except the one Banu Israel believed in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And I am a Muslim. Now I am a Muslim. Now I surrender, I submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did the angels say to him? الآن وَقَدْ عَصَيْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Now, now you are saying this? When you disobeyed before, all signs came to you before. Allah gave you a chance after chance. Allah sent with Musa والسلام, nine signs for you to reflect on, to submit, to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, وَقَدْ عَصَيْتَ قَبْلُ وَكُنْتَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ You disobeyed before and you were among the mischief doers. And you know what? Even if Allah, hypothetically speaking, even if Allah were to save Fir'aun, I guarantee you, he will go back to his old ways, his arrogance and his haughtiness. Simply because after nine signs, if he could not believe, do you think if Allah saved him from drowning, he will truly submit? And Allah knows best. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned him. And not only drowned him, he saved him, not saved his soul. He saved his body. And in, today, we're going to save your body. And his body, right now, it is preserved in Egypt in the museum. It's mummified. You could see, literally, you can go Google, you know, Fir'aun, Ramses II, I think it is, and you will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, see how powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah has great powers, no one, and whenever he decrees a matter, it shall come to pass. When Allah said, we will save you, and his body was recently discovered, in the last century or so. It wasn't for a long time. Maybe some people challenged Allah and said, okay, so where is the body of Pharaoh? But eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his body prevail and to be a sign to those tyrants and those arrogant rulers who would come after him. قُلْ مَنْ يُنَجِّيكُمْ مِنْ ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ تَدْعُونَهُ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيًا Say, O Prophet, who rescues you from the dark depth of darkness in the land and in the sea when you call him humbly, sincerely, and also in secret. In other words, openly, they make dua and they call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying these words, O oh Allah, O oh my Lord, O oh Rabb, O oh God, or secretly within themselves, they are, say, O oh Allah, help me, O oh Allah, save me, and making deals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the deal? Lain and jana. If he only saves us, we will be grateful. We will be among the grateful ones, those who appreciate what you had done and among those who will follow you.
Now, some people are truthful to their promises. Consider, for example, Yusuf Islam. Maybe most of you know who Yusuf Islam is. Yusuf Islam uh, was known before he converted to Islam in 1976 as Cat Stevens, a famous pop singer. Now, what happened to him? He nearly drowned off the coast of Malibu in California. And he made a deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, he shouted, Oh God, if you save me, I will work for you. He struck a deal with him. And what happened? After he related that, after he made the dua, a wave appeared and carried him back to shore safely. But this man was true to his promise. Actually, he was in search. Before he became a Muslim, he was in search for the truth. Now he was asking himself, which God I am going to serve? He, he talked to God, oh Allah, oh God, if you save me, I will work for you. Now his challenge was to find God. Although he was born as a Christian, but he was looking for the real God. So he studied Buddhism, he studied Hinduism, he studied numerology, he studied all sorts of religion until actually he was sick and his brother had visited Jerusalem, purchased a copy of the Quran, gave it to him as a gift, and while he was in bed, being sick, read the Quran, and this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened his heart to Islam and he embraced Islam. Nobody presented Islam to him. It was the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that that person will be among the grateful ones. And indeed, he was among the grateful ones. He done marvelous uh, things for Islam, for the community, humanitarian aids, and so on and so forth. قُلِ اللَّهُ يُنَجِّيكُمْ مِنْهَا وَمِنْ كُلِّ كَرْبٍ ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ تُشْرِكُونَ Say, Allah rescues you from these dangers and from all distresses, and yet you commit shirk. Now that's the other, other side. Some are truthful to their promises, true to their promises, while others, Allah saves them, but you find them going back to shirk. قُلِ اللَّهُ يُنَجِّيكُمْ مِنْهَا وَمِنْ كُلِّ كَرْبٍ ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ تُشْرِكُونَ Allah rescues you from being in danger and harm and from any distress for that matter. But then what happened? You go back to committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many people break their promises when they strike a deal with Allah if he saves them from danger. Allah, of course, knows that this is going to happen, yet he saves them so it can be an argument, hujja alayhim, an argument against them on the day of judgment. We have a similar ayah in Surah Al-Isra. فَلَمَّا نَجَّاكُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ أَعْرَضْتُمْ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ كَفُورًا And when he saved you, you returned back to your old attitude, to your old ways, ungrateful. And man is indeed ungrateful. The next ayah, قُلْ هُوَ الْقَادِرُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُولِكُمْ أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيعًا وَيُضِيقَ بَعْدَكُمْ بَأْسَ بَعْضٍ This ayah shows the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he can do. Say, O Prophet, say to them that he is the all-powerful. وَقُلْ هُوَ الْقَادِرُ He has the power. عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ That he will send to you عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ A punishment from above you. Could be tornadoes, could be hurricane, could be wind, could be rain, could be hail, could be anything. أو or مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِكُمْ from underneath your feet, from the earth. Could be earthquakes, uh, diseases, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. That's the second way. The third way, the third way 
is aw yalbisakum shi'an wa yudhiqa ba'dakum ba'sa ba'd and this is the worst of punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will throw you into confusion and cause you to be divided into groups and sects and you will be fighting one another you will be fighting one another no need to send anything from the heaven no need to bring anything from the earth fighting each other is the worst that could happen to any people we have you know this hadith on jabir bin abdullah when this ayah was revealed qul huwa al qadiru ala yab'atha alaykum adhaban min fawqikum he is all powerful to send the punishment to you from above you the prophet said sallallahu alayhi wasallam a'udhu bi wajhik i seek refuge with your face aw min tahti arjulikum when he read this part of the ayah or from underneath you he supplicated the same a'udhu bi wajhik he again said i seek refuge with your face when he read the last part, أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيعًا وَيُذِيقَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَأْسَ بَعْضٍ Or to cover you with confusion and divide you into sects and groups and that you fight one another. He said, هَذِهِ أَهْوَنُ أَوْ أَيْسَرٍ This is less burdensome or easier. But if you think about it, it is actually the, the, the punishment that comes in this way particularly like uh, what is happening today. Reflect on what has been happening with the, with the Muslim Ummah, for example. And the Muslim Ummah had been really divided and been fighting each other for a long time. And that in itself is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fighting that is going on today is a form of punishment indeed so we have this uh, hadith also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said this is i think on uh, sa'd ibn abi waqqas he says we accompanied the messenger of allah and passed by the masjid of bani muawiyah the prophet went in offered two rak'ah and we prayed with him and then he supplicated to his lord for a long time and then we said to him what were you supplicating? He said, سَأَلْتُ رَبِّ ثَلَاثًا سَأَلْتُهُ أَلَّا يُهْلِكَ أُمَّتِي بِالْغَرَقِ فَأَعْطَانِيهَا I asked the Lord, my Lord, for three things. I asked him not to destroy my ummah, the Muslims, by drowning, and he gave that to me. He granted that to me. وَسَأَلْتُهُ أَلَّا يُهْلِكَ أُمَّتِي بِالسَّنَةِ فَأَعْطَانِيهَا And then I asked him, to, I asked him not to destroy my ummah with famine, by famine, and he gave that to me as well. The third thing he asked Allah was, And I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I supplicated that he not make them, the Muslim ummah, taste the violence of one another, and he did not give that to me. Now you understand why what is happening among the Muslim is happening. This prophecy, this is the Prophet ﷺ is explaining that to us. The Prophet said also in a hadith, وَسَتَفْطَرِقُوا هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ عَلَى ثَلَاثٍ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةٍ كُلَّهَا فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدَةٍ And my ummah will be divided into 73 sects, all of them in the hellfire except for one, except for one. So Allah said, أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيَعًا وَيُضِيقَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَأْسَ بَعْضٍ And he will make you taste the violence of one another. He will be fighting one another. انظر كيف نصرف الآيات لعلهم يفقهون. Look how we use different methods to explain our ayat, our revelations, so that they may understand. لعلهم يفقهون. And if only the ummah returns back to the Quran, reads the Quran, ponders on these great ayat, and give up 
this ego and give up this whatever and surrender really truly back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Prophet said لا يصلح آخر هذه الأمة إلا بما صلح به أولها the, the affairs of the latter part of the ummah cannot be mended, cannot be reformed except on that which was mended and reformed in the first part of this ummah. This is the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the time of the Sahaba, ma'ana alayhi wa sahabi. So we need to reflect, we need to return back. And what was, what does that mean? It means we need to go back to the very source that made them who they were then, and that is the Qur'an. That is the Qur'an. We have to go back to the Qur'an, learn the Qur'an, understand the Qur'an, implement, be the walking Qur'an, and only then Allah's mercy will come to us, and all these sects will go away, and all the schisms and all the fightings will stop, and we become one strong, powerful community doing what we were supposed to do, and that is to guide humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge and guide us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Allahumma ameen. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم سبحانك اللهم اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته